Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching Palm Royale, Season 1, Episode 6. Maxine, Maxine does takes something. Takes a step. Takes a step. This was a weird episode. This is a weird show. Um, this, to me, is the first time that it's been really out of pocket. Well, okay. So, all in all, like you... If you want to watch along with us, patreon.com slash don't watch the star three dollars here. Uh, it was a more pensive watch along. Yeah. Um, I, by the end, I was getting it. But, like, it, it, certainly the emotional beats, like you said, it, Bruce yeah. Dern is Laura Dern's... Real life dad. Yeah. And so, like, the... Uh, spoiler alert, Skeet died. Oh, hey, I didn't turn on the other cameras. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert. Pick up from yeah. here. Um... So yeah, spoiler alert, Skeet dies in this episode. Um, and so that, the like very end of it, when like she's realizing that he's dead, that really kind of got to me, because I was like, poor Laura Dern had to act that like in well, real by life. Time, by the time we got to the montage at the end, yeah. I felt like my feet were back on the ground. But for easily two-thirds of the episode, I thought I was doing something wrong. No, I, I was, was like, not, did I, did, am did I, I not miss an attention? episode? Like, like, <laughs> and that was making me drift a little bit. I yeah. was sort of like, what are they talking about? So what are Perry and Douglas doing? Well, Just it, money laundering? It sounds like fraud. They're, they're building another condo yeah. separate from the one that collapsed. Correct. And they need the Prince of Luxembourg to put his name on it. I don't know. But they're also and giving so they're writing him checks. 250. So, okay. Split between 12 people is the 500,000. And then they're giving the Prince of Luxembourg 250,000. And where's that money coming from? Is this Norma's money? Norma's money. Okay. Yeah. And then so Maxine has finally also handled the $75,000 she has Well, supposedly. Mary. I thought she already did. Like, as, as soon no, as. No, they still. As soon as they got control of Norma's money, I just assumed she took care of that, but she didn't because. It makes me wonder if that's all the money. Well, she was like, she basically said, we're broke again. And so that's when Robert was like, why do you think they have these parties? Like, this is how they make the money. So, like, you have to have the beach ball. There was this, like, whole thread that the that the beach ball itself is not enough. That there needs to be a celebrity guest in order to guarantee people come. Well, I think, although no, nobody else knows about the Rolodex. So, yeah, I don't know. It's very well, how do bizarre. they know if everybody's being blackmailed? No, nobody knows it's been destroyed. Oh, okay. Except for Evelyn. Unless she told everybody. But that's, like, what's so bizarre to me, because I'm on your team, I'm like, is it not just the end of season party? That's what I thought. Do you not just want to go eat? Is that our poor showing that we I just want to go to the party? <laughs> is it not just, Cinderella yeah. wants to go to the ball. Do you not just want to go, like, so eat and drink for free <laughs> at your friend's place? I, like, well, it costs money. Well, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Very bizarre. That's where that's where the confusion for me was coming because like maybe yes it's our poor showing but like I just <laughs> fundamentally don't understand not, not going, going to, to the, the end of season Ball. party but it's like the it's not even just like I don't understand not going to the party I don't understand not going to the final end of season thing that's like structured the season is structured it's like not going to prom yeah and it's the the like final thing before you go back to where you really live you know mm. I don't it's bizarre to me so yeah, so Maxine is like, she either, she has to get the Rolodex back, or like, figure out the Rolodex, you know, blackmail somehow, or get a, like, top tier guest, and so she's thinking she can get the Prince of Luxembourg, because of, um, Perry and, when, uh, where there was an entire Douglas. part, because this show is so heightened, and again, that's what I like about it, but it, it's making me feel dumb, because I just assumed that the prince and princess yeah. were phony. Sure. I was like, is this even the real? Are they real? Because they had those silly accents and stuff. But then based on the Robert reveal, I was like, oh, so then I guess so that really, real. I guess it is real. Because the other thing too is it's like, for me, I think it's like, it's kind of like a glass onion. But there are so <laughs> many layers. But I think I'm I'm trying to. We are trying too hard to find something. More. something. But because, that, because that's the other thing, though, is, like, so, because we've also got What's-Her-Face's husband, Raquel's husband, Pinky, who is also dirty, because mm -hmm. he is, like, straight-up mob, and so you were like, is this, like, money laundering? Like, what is going on? 
And I just don't know. And I also like, is Robert, how much in cahoots are Robert and Maxine now? Because it seems like still very little cahoots. Well, they, but, like, say, they are friends. They, they are have friends said the now. Phrase. But also like, is Maxine or is Robert going to get that cashier's check back for her? Or is this just a gay rendezvous like, outside of all the rest I think, of it? Yeah. So then I'm, there's like, there's, then there's just moving parts that I feel like don't need to be moving because they're not doing anything. <laughs> I don't understand why the gun matters so much. I don't either. Just oh, because okay. it's like proof. That's I, what I mean. But I was like, it, it, first of all, I, I mean, when did that kind of forensics start mattering? Oh, at, at um, this point? yeah, you could do like, um, uh, what's even, a, is he, uh, ballistics? Yeah. I think you could do ballistics in this. But 60s. it's like, skeet until this episode wasn't dead. So what's the crime? Like, who's reporting- Attempted murder. But, so who's going, who's reporting it? Sure. Like- Yeah. Well, they managed he wouldn't, to keep it insular. insular well, and so. also, like, he would not turn in Linda yeah. because she clearly wasn't trying to shoot him. So I was just sort of like, what, why yeah. does the gun matter at all? Unless there's- I don't think it does. Yeah. And also, so- for me, the short-sightedness of not copying out the cards so you know what the blackmail is for next year, because Robert brought out the invitations that also have the blackmail in them. Also, and I'm with you, no one knows that the Rolodex is it's destroyed, burned, yeah. so it's like, just be like, I remember what you did, or I know what you did. Yeah. <laughs> like, just open threat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I and that's know. the thing, that they're, they're adding details, but it's like... The details are making it less. It's cloudier. Yeah. <laughs> it's really strange. And also, like, so Maxine sends the invitations. Um, you're right. The prince comes over to presumably have a rendezvous with Robert. Um, I actually, I, I will say, I did really like the scene with Evelyn and Skeet. Where, because I guess now he knows that that's how, I guess he didn't know before, I, I guess, know. that that's how he married Evelyn somehow. Like, that was the what clinched it. Was this, like, attempted murder? But again, though, it's, like, all in the family. Like, I just don't really... It, it's the thing we've been saying where it's just, like, this, like, spectacular cast is really yeah. elevating yeah. this mediocre... Because I'm like, it's House of Janie. Like, every scene she was in was, Of course, yes. I mean, the whole, like, take my hand thing. It's yeah. like, that was nothing, and she made it into something. Norma... It's still going after the revolver, but, but it's, it's a, a different, different revolver. One, yeah. So then maybe we don't. Maybe there is something that we don't know. Maybe. I'm gonna hope. Yeah. I'm gonna hope. She he finally, because she finally made it over to the gun wall and then picked up the revolver that's two up from the one that's mm -hmm. missing. This doesn't need to be a Swiss watch for me, but I would, I like, would like for it there to, to be, be twelve hours. <laughs> What if there could be a Timex? Like, <laughs> I would like if if the if the hand went around. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> At least a sundial. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so something. Um, I kind of find... I find Virginia baffling. I agree. Because the show is adamant that she's a character. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. I'm going to interrupt you completely. Because what, <laughs> what the issue is for me is she's like, first, we take down Perry Donahue. Literally no one. And then we're going after <laughs> Nixon. Nixon. And I'm like... First of all, Nixon has tied his own ribbon. Like we are, we are good on Nixon. But like, and also the current social, political, socio political climate is not doing the show favors because no. if I, I, well, I like, I wish we had a Nixon. Do you know? Like, like I'm like, I wish exposing a scandal would take the patriarchy I know, down. Right? I was like, that it's a hydra. Yeah. You cut off one head, three more sprout. Like, yeah. and she, because she keeps saying that. I was like, the root, those roots run deep. Well, it's also, again, like, I love that you think that somehow getting Nixon out of office is going to stop the whole patriarchy. Like, well, it, Nixon is not, Nixon's not the one who's upholding the patriarch. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's that's a symptom not, of. yeah. <laughs> I, I just, it, it, I find. I find them also confusing in, in ways that we've been chronicling over our coverage. Because I'm like, you know, morally, they are righteous. Like, they uh, are yeah. fighting the good fight. But, it's but the way the show is positioned, self they are buzzkills. Buzzkill, yeah. And every time we cut to them, yeah. and I'm just sort of like, I feel like that does, unless we're going somewhere, and again, I don't really think we are with that plot. <laughs> it does... The it does the plot a disservice. Like I agree. it does 
the good fight a disservice. Well, the other thing, too, is, like, I because they are, you know, like you said, buzzkills, it's kind of, like, at the very end when the one that's pregnant is, like, my husband's number got called up for the Vietnam draft. I'm like, I mean, okay. The, the show... The show has not earned that level of drama. Yeah. The only place that it has, it, it got close with Skeet. And yep. again, the Bruce and Laura. That is the like. The Durans were doing a heavy amount of lifting. That's a, what a I'm saying is like, lifting. if that was not her real life father, or if that was like two other, like if it was, even if it was like Mitzi and her dad or something, it was it would well, not even, pack the same. Even part. the Robert and the Prince of Luxembourg, you know, because I found Ricky Martin, I like Ricky Martin. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a, an apologist for him on the show. But I, he's been a little bit in, not inconsistent. I but. don't think it's inconsistent. I think he. I don't think he's been inconsistent. I think he's been inconsistently used. The point I was getting at was that was effective for me. Sure. His, his sort of like your highness. Yeah, his reaction to that because I even made a joke. Where I was like, something tells me this is not. That's not the yeah. first time Ricky Martin's had this experience. Well, I also it does beg the question to go, to go back to your question where it's like, well, is are the prince and princess of Luxembourg real? real. Because. When did the Prince of Luxembourg have time to go to Linda's store and write his phone number in that book? It could have been a friend of a friend type, like a connection. Maybe. But he was talking to somebody yeah. on the phone, that, what seemed like an extensive phone conversation. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Uh, it's, it's a little weird. I, I would ignore that, yeah. but, uh, but the point I wanted to make is those moments landed... But the severity of the pregnant woman's husband being called to yeah, Vietnam yeah. is staggering mm -hmm. in a way that the show hasn't I agree. hasn't earned. Especially because it's so tonally inconsistent with the way that even even when Maxine comes clean to Anne about how she did win all those pageants, but she just picked other people's names because she didn't know who she was yet. Well, and so they had the shiny sheet in Chattanooga? I think they were old copies because she specifically, Anne specifically said all of those women were dead long before you were born. So I think at the orphanage, there was just like a back catalog. Uh, yeah. That's I what mean, makes I sense to me. I, I, I don't hate any of this. I just don't think it's being conveyed in the sure. right way. Yeah. I also like, I am like, I like, I like thinking that there's something more nefarious at play and then to find out that it's not like, yeah. I, I like that notion, but again, it's like the show is doing it in such a way that I feel like I'm doing something. It's wrong. a little antithetical to the, to how like bombastic parts of the mm -hmm. show are. And I'm also, I'm at a point where I need for Maxine to absolutely tell Douglas how it's going to happen from now on. Because he's making a lot of decisions, and he doesn't have the good sense God gave a rock. Like, <laughs> what did you say? I forgot what you said in the reaction, but you were just like a bucket a of idiots. Bucket of idiots, <laughs> I, like all of I them. Liked, I liked Douglas in the first four episodes, and then these last two have been real challenging. He is well. He was barely in them, uh -huh. and it seemed like a very sunny. Like he was just sort of like a golden retriever that mm. was like a pilot. And then blah blah whatever. But now he has. You know, if this is, if true, and they don't try huge to... Huge if true. <laughs> huge if true, but, like, if true, and they don't get out of this, like, weird building deal, and they have written non, you know, retrievable checks for $750,000, that's insane. You know what I mean? Mm hmm And because now Douglas knows that Perry is going down for the Emerald Isle condo. Oh, yeah, because... That was it, in the paper. Robert gave him the paper. But then Robert didn't tell Maxine! And that's kind of... I'm like... That's why I'm like, are you still in Kahoot? Like, how much Kahoots are you in? Because I don't... I don't. I'm, I actually didn't finish the, the little bit that I was saying about Virginia, was I was gonna say uh, is what we're meant to be taking from her character and those scenes that... Are we meant to be taking that Linda slash Penelope is... She's, not as, like she's the, not as committed to the cause yeah. because she has something to fall back on, kind of. And it's like, now her dad's dead. She, you know, Evelyn is obviously, Skeet was like, you'll be taken care of. But, like, I can't imagine he's leaving zero dollars to his only child as well. So I think that's more what it is, where it's like, you don't have to fully commit to the cause because you don't need it. But, like, 
Virginia and the other women need it because they don't have this money in this society to fall back on. No matter how much she wants to distance herself from it, it is a little poor little rich girl routine, mm-hmm. a little bit, you know? So that's what I think Virginia's, like, whole deal is okay. with Linda. Where it's like, you can't be half committed. She's like, because she burned the Rolodex and that was how Virginia was going to take down Nixon, but... <laughs> you can't get over it. I can't get over it. So, <laughs> it's, it's just like, also, like, also, obviously, Nixon was a terrible president and he was corrupt and, like, obvious, like, I'm not arguing that, but I love it's that... Naive. It's very naive <laughs> In a way this, that this woman, I don't believe that she would be that naive. Virginia. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's very naive of a 30-something black woman in West Palm Beach, mm-hmm. Florida, to believe that she can take down Richard Nixon, with one, president of the United States of America. With one secret written on a... On a yeah. yeah. Because who is, ver- like, who is checking the veracity of this handwritten note on the back of this Rolodex? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, like, Nixon wasn't in the Rolodex. Spiro Agnew was in the Rolodex, but Nixon specifically wasn't. So, like, how are you even gonna... And again, this is does not say naivete to me, but you, I think, are not actually uh, thinking through all of the implications of bringing down the U.S. government. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <sighs> <laughs> You know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. As much as I enjoy the silliness, the whimsy, the fantasy yeah. of the show, I it's, don't understand its relation to reality. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> totally all over the place in a way that's weird. We had, we did have Dinah. Well, she's convinced that Perry knows that she bought the apartment for Eddie, uh-huh. and then, but he is like, "That's fine because it lets me, uh, like, mess around too." And then Maxine was like, I think it's my manicurist. And um, and then she's convinced that Douglas knows that she tried to make a pass at Robert. And then... Uh, I think that we're, I think we're done with that, though. I think so, too. Because And then Dinah was like, well, I think he's gay. So we've all tried to do it. But, like... <laughs> Wait, how did she do it? No, it was, like, it was like this. Kind of, like, almost like drinking. But it was like, yeah, it was bizarre. He's a Momo. A Momo. <laughs> And I love the way that she kept, uh, that Maxine kept trying to, like, ask him, do you wear loafers? <laughs> do you tread lightly <laughs> in them? <laughs> like, it's very funny. I don't know. It's just a little weird. It's just a little, it's hard to navigate mm-hmm. when it is so up and down, kind mm-hmm. of. So, um, but yeah, Skeet is dead. That was also really, we we hung a really long time on Laura and Bruce Dern. With Alice and Janney just like creepily, st- I mean, it was just it was it was a really long time, and it made it feel like she was being suspicious. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't really. I think they were going for poignant. I think so too. I didn't fully read that way. It was bizarre, and they they were doing LSD as well, mm-hmm. <laughs> just as like, and it's it beautiful. It was very pretty, but I do think it may have reacted with the morphine. <laughs> I'm still having fun. Yeah, I, I would appreciate if it was a little tighter if yeah. we kind of honed it in a little bit i i don't think this needed 10 episodes no. i think it should have been eight. <laughs> i think it should have been eight so but yeah that's that's gonna be our struggle with everything yeah that's gonna be that that's gonna be our gimmick is how many episodes did we should, need to tell should this it story? have been yeah <laughs> to tell this story well very few shows get it right unfortunately <laughs> apparently <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> so, okay. Um, well, that was our conversation about episode six. We will be back next week with episode seven. Yes, we will. And we'll be on time too. Will went out of town to watch the eclipse, which was very cool. But that's why we're late this week. So, sure. We'll be on time. We'll be on time. <laughs> okay, bye.